Whatever. Make sure it is forward. Okay. Yeah, very good. You're locked in place. Okay. okay. And let's follow with your eye to come down just a little bit that moves it into a little bit better position. So there it is. So the first shot goes something like that. Like that. So the strategy here is rather than divide, 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 is kind of just kind of chip away from the Got outer it. edges of it and just kind of, and then as you do so, there'll be little stragglers that kind of get away from you. You got to chase those down, <coughs> and then come back to the main one here. And since the white ring is almost by definition part of that transparent membrane, what I see is that it behaves pretty well. It kind of stays in one position. It doesn't drift too much because it's kind of tethered as part of that membrane. But as I I chip away at this thing. I'm kind of um, breaking the, the the sheet that kind of holds it in position. So after typically about two thirds of the way through, um, it'll start to have more movement, and the laser will start kind of pushing it backwards, and then I'll chase it and chase it, and chase it. And then uh, sometimes I'll just uh, have the patient do a little, a little flick of a movement, look down, look straight ahead, whatever like that, and it'll bring it right back into position again, and then just go go crazy with it again until it starts moving further back out of range. So. Um, as we progress in this, I might actually ask you to start moving, you know, move in a certain direction, certain direction, flick it back into position again. So one of the questions that uh, people will bring to me, they'll say, well, you know, I, I asked my doctor about the laser treatment, and they said, well, all it does is break it up into smaller pieces, and it can appear like that. Uh, you know, watching this, I can see little bits and fragments in there. <clears throat> but the assumption is that the smaller bits and pieces would be just as bothersome, you know, like, like, or the doctor will say, well, wouldn't you rather just have one floater rather than a bunch of smaller ones? And my answer to that is that that doesn't show that you really thought the thing through because small little bits and pieces, especially if they're further away from the retina, again, because you don't see the floaters, you see the shadows, the smaller ones won't cast a shadow long enough to reach the retina. So you can, ha you can have some, uh, you know, some debris fields that if they're small enough, uh, may not be bothersome at all. There is a um, kind of a rare condition called uh, asteroid hyalosis, where the eye forms a bunch of uh, dense but very very small, like little glass-like crystals that form in the vitreous. <clears throat> and it's called asteroid hyalosis because it looks like an asteroid field, and the hyaline hyaline uh, is from the Greek meaning glass, so it looks like like just literally thousands of glass beads. And uh, it's, you know, it's got some genetic component. It's not considered part of an eye disease, but uh, I've seen some really impressive uh, asteroid. And it's interesting. The first time you see it in your residency, you're like, "Oh my God! How can this person even see?" It's a, you know, you just how could they see through that? And you ask them, and they're like, "What? I, I don't really see floaters, you know, um, because each of these individual crystals is so small, and the shadow isn't reaching the retina, so they are you know, not very symptomatic, not nearly like you'd think they would be." And that's uh, why I can get away with, um, you know, I don't, it doesn't have to be 100% perfectly clear. It just has to be a lot, lot clearer, and what remains might just be really small and not very noticeable. All right, we'll call it a day. Okay.